Yo, watch out! Watch out! What is that? Oh my god! Oh, oh my god, it is an alligator! Oh shoot! Yeah. It's coming right for you! <laughs> you suck! Sorry. No, I'm calling the manager on you! I'm taking a report and refer it to the state attorney's office, okay? Yee guys, welcome back for today's video inspired by Juke Squad. We are taking this fake alligator head and putting it on top of this RC boat and taking it to river and trying to prank people. And let me just say, when we did this prank, things got intense, out of hand. You have to stay to the very end to see exactly what happened, but trust me, it was one of the craziest stories and things that has ever happened to us. But before we get in the video, we dropped new merch just in time for Halloween. Right here, we got the IBP logo caught up in a spider web. Got a cool design on the back as well. And it, you know, it looks kind of boring, you know, just black and white, but it doesn't end there. A simple snap of the fingers, boom. Yes, you saw that right. It glows in the dark. It's only available for a limited time, so if you want it, the link is in the description. But we gotta get in this crazy vid. Oh shoot, go for it. Oh, she's scared, bro. <laughs> story begins on the river that day it was just me Ricky and our friend Theo golf right here we were just on the river with the alligator having a dandy day we were doing the little remote controlling and we thought nothing of it and then suddenly someone reported us to the lifeguards so the lifeguards came over and they were like yo um is there a snake around here and then they found out that there was no snake it was us controlling a remote control alligator so they said you guys can't be doing that but then kindly we asked them if if we get permission from your higher ups will we be able to do this prank so they said sure why not they took us to management and we asked them can we have permission to do this prank and they said you guys have full range of the park it was a collective group of the employees so we thought man we're good for the rest of the day there's no troubles no worries the lifeguards got a call in saying there was a giant snake in the river they came over here right where we placed the gator and we thought we were getting the boot we thought we were, it was a guaranteed kick out but somehow we managed to talk to them everyone there was super cool and they're like yo you got free range in the entire park let's go yeah dude so we're here the whole day we're posting up and we have no fear of getting kicked because they gave us permission there's no limits dude <laughs> Oh my god! It's just a remote control. It's fake, it's fake. Awesome. <laughs> so we continued doing the prank. Everyone was having a good laugh. Even after we pranked them, some people got scared. But after they all laughed about it, until one big Cheeserton lady who had to get triggered came along and just rolled the clip. Yo, watch out, watch out. What is that? Oh my God. Oh, oh my God, it is an alligator. Oh shoot. Yeah. It's coming right for you. You suck. Sorry. 
Right after that, we apologized to her and her children. We said we were super sorry for pranking them. We weren't even trying to prank kids, but right before they came down the river, a group of kids came down the river, we pranked them. They were all laughing, so we're like, man, we'll give it a try on these parents and these kids, and let me just tell you, this mom was not having it that day. I don't know what she ate in her breakfast, but she was absolutely triggered. So she comes storming up out of the river, absolutely cheese. She's like, I bet you guys didn't have permission. I bet you didn't have permission from the management. I bet you did not have permission from have the management. Permission. And I had to tell her that we actually did. We already have permission. No, that's not okay. So at this point, she just does not believe us. She's like, I don't believe it. I'm taking it to management headquarters. So we walk up there. I tell her, ma'am, you can ask all you want, but we already got permission. We walk right into where all the lifeguards are and what we thought at the time was the top tippy tier management, even though it wasn't. Keep that in mind. It's going to be important later on in the story. She tells them that we were pranking her and she wants us to be kicked out of the park immediately. All the employees say, ma'am, you just got to hold your horses. Take it easy. They say that we can continue doing our prank. The lady that we pranked was not having that at all. So far, okay. everyone's like been laughing and we it's like Yeah, yeah, all the your dumb people that want to think that's funny. Well, I mean like, you're the only one so far that has got really mad. So she heads off to the front desk to try to complain to someone else. We tell all the employees, yo, we'll leave right now if you guys want us to. We don't want to cause any more trouble than what has already happened. And they say, no, you guys are fine. Continue doing your prank, you're good. So we're starting to walk back to where we were filming the prank in this little cove area. And on the way there, the real management comes up. I'm not gonna expose her name. We're just gonna call her head management lady. She comes up immediately. She already has like a little bit of hostility. You can hear it in her voice. She's coming after us saying, yo, you can't do this. And we were like, your employees gave us permission. I didn't even know you existed. I didn't know there was a manager above the management. So she follows us back to the cove. She asks us to pull this thing out. When she sees this, she was like, no, stay right here, back in this little cove that we were in. Don't go anywhere. Sit. Go sit. Why, why, what are we gonna wait here for? Go sit right after Can you the tell trip. me what we're gonna wait here for? Go sit. I wanna be here okay, for it because I don't want anyone first, to lie. Look at me. No, we're not lying, okay, but we're looking at need, a okay. lawsuit against Stop. you guys. She walks off. At this point, me, Theo, and Nick all look at each other and we're like, Yo, she's calling the cops. She's calling the cops right now, so she's we gotta dip out. Because we've been in this situation before, and when someone says stay right there, 99.857% of the time, it means they're calling the cops. We did not want to wait there for hours, and most of all, we did not want to waste the officer's time. It's a big waste of his time for something that is just a little joke. So we all look at each other and we're like, we're gonna walk off and they can't do anything. If there's not a police officer on duty, they cannot physically touch you and they cannot physically detain you if you've done nothing wrong. And at this point, we've done nothing wrong. So we walk right past her, all three of us. Nick's carrying a bunch of stuff, Theo's carrying a bunch of stuff, I'm carrying the camera, recording the whole time. Keep that in mind, that's gonna come important later on in the story. We walk past head management lady and she's like, What do you think you're doing, buds? And we say, ma'am, we're walking out of here and there's nothing you're gonna do about it because we have done nothing wrong. If you leave, I will call FWC. That's your choice. So we continue walking. She says, you guys get back here. No, you can't be doing that. Ma'am, we have to leave and you know that you can legally not detain us. So we continue marching on our way. Right now they're calling the cops. So we got to dip out of here. Even though we got permission, there was one cheeser lady. So that means they're trying to detain us right now. We're walking out of here before anything bad happens and the situation escalates to another level. No need for none of that to happen. And uh, yeah, we're just getting out of here. At this point, a few more employees start following behind her and we get the sense that something's about to go down. You could just feel, this is where it got like more intense. So we're on the pathway to the exit right over here. And all of a sudden from behind us, you hear head man lady go, hey, don't let the employees out. And then she starts describing all three of us, like, three, three male suspects fleeing the scene, repeat, two Asian boys and one white redhead kid, do not let them out, repeat, do not let them leave, okay? Okay, it, it wasn't like that much, but. It, she, it was kind of like that. It, it, it was, was kind of like that, though. We're on this pathway, and if you follow it and go right, you get to the exit and get to the parking lot. If you go left, there's a patch of grass, and then a wall about four feet high, and then a three foot like spiky fence that you see in those like horror movies. So me, Theo, and Nick all just look at each other. We're not saying anything at this point. We all just know how to like talk without talking. And in our minds, we're saying, yo boys, we gotta bolt and sprint out of here before something goes down. 
So we start walking a little faster towards the exit and then you see four employees or security guards. I don't know what they were, but they start blocking the exit and like coming towards us. So we start bolting, mainly me and Theo. Nick has a bunch of stuff, so he's going pretty slow. I'm leaning the pack, filming the whole thing and I'm thinking the only way we're getting out of here without being detained is hopping the fence. So that's what we do. Right there, I'm halfway on the outside of the fence, halfway in the park, and my balls get caught. With too much information. No, bro, this is important to the story. My balls get caught on the fence. And I'm like, yo, I am done. Because I see one of the security guards running after me and Theo in the front leading the pack. And he goes for the tackle and tackles Theo down to the ground while Theo's holding onto the fence. Rips him right off the fence. Part of the fence snaps off and then he goes for me. But when he goes for me, he doesn't pull. He goes for like a little push. He pushes me over and I fall into a bush on the outside of the park. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Get down. If he would have pulled me in, let's just say my balls would oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it, that's it. The you you get the point, you get the point. So I escaped, I'm on the outside of the fence in the parking lot, I, I'm thinking, I'm getting out here, we're gonna be good. Nick's still waddling way in the back, I'm way behind. I'm watching this all happen. I see Ricky and Theo climbing the fence about 30 feet in front of me, and I'm just holding the alligator and the boat because when I started running, the boat fell out, so I was just like, oh dang. It is like something out of a movie, man. When the guy tackled Theo, the guy fell down, but Theo somehow managed to stay on his feet, he gets up with the cooler and all of his stuff, runs right past all of the employees through the exit, meets me on the outside, and we just look at each other again and say, yo, we gotta make it to the car. So we start sprinting. None of the employees can keep up with us except for this one super athletic guy. He was pretty quick. So Theo and I make it all the way to the end of the parking lot and we're like, yo, we passed the car. So we have to go back towards the employees. We see Theo's car. Theo hops in the driver's seat, I hop in the passenger seat. But one athletic guy hops right in front of Theo's car and blocks us in, giving time for all the slower employees to come up. I would say there's about four employees surrounding Theo's car, taking picture of his license plate, and me and Theo just said to each other, man, there's no way we're getting out of here because they're blocking us in. So I step out of the car, and at this point, I think Nick's still in the park, waddling his way. But that was not the case! While all this is happening, Ricky and Theo are sending up a perfect diversion for your boy, even though I don't need one because I'm a ninja. While all the employees are over there talking to Ricky and Theo, trying to capture them, keep them locked in the park, I just simply walk over the fence because all the employees are over there, no one's looking at me. And I hide behind the bush for about 20 minutes. I think Nick is still in the park being detained, but I wasn't. I'm walking back towards the park, and as I get closer, the employee behind me says, sir, do not enter the park. And I say, sir, I have to enter the park. You detained my brother illegally and you know you cannot do that. And then I announced to everyone at the ticket booth, at the front, all the employees. I say, I'm walking in like Conor McGregor and there's nothing you're gonna do. So I start moving my hands like McGregor, doing the little waddle waddle. The employee at the front says, sir, I've been asked to not let you in. She's standing there like this with her arm out. I said, ma'am, please move, I must get my brother. She moves her arm out of the way, steps aside, and I walk right through the gate. Like Conor McGregor. And right then, the employee that tackled Theo pointed to me and said I assaulted the front entrance lady when I didn't even come close to touching her. And I was filming the whole thing by my side, so I told him, sir, I didn't even come close to touching her. I looked at her, she even looked surprised. And at that point, a few more employees join in and keep saying, I assaulted her, I assaulted her. And this is where I got heated, I'll admit it. I started saying, no way, cause if five employees say that, and I'm just a little kid, who knows, I could be going to jail for that. And then I remember I was filming the whole thing, so I tell him, I was filming, there's nothing you can say, and you know I didn't even touch her. And we go back and forth arguing for maybe 10 minutes. I turn around and I see Nick out of the corner of my eye. I'm like, yo, how did you get out here? He, he just looks at me and he gives me a nod. So I say, run to the car. We start running. Yo, bro, we're going. I don't want to go to Theo's car because they have it blocked in and I don't want to go to my car because they'll surround it and they'll block us in. So I go to a fake car, a car that is not mine. All the employees catch up to us, they surround the car, they think they got us. I know they didn't because it wasn't our car. 
So then I tell Nick, run to the real car, and we go to another fake car. The employees follow us there, and they think that's the real car, because they wouldn't think a little kid like me would think of an elaborate plan like this, but I did on the fly. So then I'm like, yo, run to the actual real car, my blue 200,000 mile old beat up minivan. We get there, and by that point, there's probably 10, 15 employees throughout the park that are on golf carts on foot, and it's just three of us. There's no chance that we get out of there. We kept trying to reason with them, and we kept saying, please let us go, let us go, let us go. And they kept saying, no, no, no. And it just went back and forth for maybe 45 minutes to an hour, way too long, and we knew that the cops were on the way, and the employees knew the cops were on the way because they stinking called them. And as the cops were getting closer, the guy who tackled Theo and accused me of assaulting the lady when I walked back into the park said, Sonny boy, you better watch out when the cops come because you're going to get charged for assault. And I said, sir, I don't think you want to keep saying that because I have footage of me walking right past her without even touching her at all. And I said, sir, you straight up tackled my friend and physically assaulted him by dragging him off the fence. And then right then he started backing off his story. He started saying, I don't know what you're talking about. I have no clue what you're talking about. Huh? I don't know what you're talking about. Are you recording all this now? I'm recording you, man, because I don't, I don't know what you guys are saying. And right when they realized that I had the whole thing on recording, they started changing the story a little bit, backing off, being a lot less aggressive. So we waited there for maybe 10, 15 more minutes. The cops finally arrived, and we had to talk to the cops for about two hours, and the cop concluded that all we would have to get is a simple, one year trespass for each of us. Not, not even that bad. One year? These are official Please. trespass warnings, so That's if we go worse. back in the park until September 30th of 2019, if we go in before that, we get arrested. Yeah. So that took a large chunk out of our day talking to the police, talking to the management, and we did not get to go back out and finish the fake alligator prank. So if you guys want us to go back out, make sure to smash the like button. We will be back there next year. We will do more of these if you want to see them on a different river though, because we don't want to go to jail. We absolutely love you guys. And until next time, yeah.